The first time I ever gambled was I was seven. And I used to have to ride my 10 speed across town to take my great grandmother to the VFW to play bingo. And that was kind of one of the social interactions our family always did when we got together, playing cards, poker, things like that. I was about 33 when I got back into gambling and began to use that as my way to cope. Um, I had all kinds of stresses between my married life, we were trying to start a family through in vitro fertilization, um, I had huge job responsibilities that had come online, and so for me that was my way that I wanted to cope and, and numb out from the things that were coming at me that I couldn't deal with. For me it was the high. I mean, I mean, I can physically tell you there is a physical palpitation and, and, and physical reaction to going to the casino, and that's part of what they do so well there is the noise, the lights, and, and honestly, it feels like you're a hamster on a wheel because if you win, you want to go back because you want to win more, and if you lose, you need to go back to try to win to cover what you've lost. And so it really was a very, very self-destructive cycle. Um, my last day of gambling, I had gone to the casino and. Uh, Got up there and, and spent about $4,000 in about a 30 minute period in a slot machine. And I just stood up and was like, I, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for the money I've just spent outside of going back to my house fund and taking money out of it. For me, I came down the uh, escalator and I still remember this. I just wanted to sink into the ground like when it, when it stops at the bottom. I was like, I could feel no lower than I felt coming off of that and just felt like it just put me underground at that point. And so, so that was my last day of gambling and I reached out to a chance to change who honestly saved my life and uh, just knew I had to get help. Nice to meet you here. Hi, Hi. Marceline, I'm here to see Rita. A lot of people that I told after I got sober that I was a compulsive gambler didn't believe me. Well, you don't look like an addict. You, I mean, I would have known surely that you were spending six hours a day at a casino. And I was like, no, no, you wouldn't. I mean, we're very good manipulators. We're very good liars. And we, we find the way to make that happen for ourselves. Uh, it financially devastated us. Um, and then I had two job losses in that span as well. So we had to pull money out of retirement to basically live off of because there was no savings that had been taken with uh, through the addiction. It meant that we were not gonna be able to uh, do things together as a family. I mean, it, it stopped our ability to, to do anything extra. You know, sometimes we had to call and make arrangements on our mortgage. Sometimes we had to call people and say, hey, I can't make a payment this month. I mean, it was, it was definitely hard to stand back and, and look at those things and say, wow, look at the mess I've created because you're trying to get healthy, not sit here and look at the big mess that you've made all the time. But that's the only way you clear that addiction is to sit there and, and face the consequence of what you know, you've created. So, Even just the other day, my son had gone to scout camp and he came home. He's like, I learned this new game called 21. And, and I just sat there for a second. I was like, you, do you mean blackjack? And he was like, yeah, you want to play? And at that moment, it was gut-wrenching for me because as a mother, you want to sit down and play with your kids. We started and it just, it became a trigger for me even after eight years. And I was like, you know what, Emery, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to finish this out. I was like, this is just, it's too much for me at this point. I was like, just, I hope you understand that. He goes, no mom, I get it. And you know, my daughter understood it as well. And so we've just tried to explain it to them that, you know, addiction runs in our family and that, you know, I just wanna be honest with them and, and, and have them know that they may struggle with addiction themselves and it may not be gambling. For me now, long term, I journal. Um, I journal a lot. I, mean, I like to work out. I like to hike. Um, I love puzzles. Um, so I do a lot of things like that that are still individual items because to me gambling was an individual thing. Um, but I just now channel that energy differently. You know, still allow me that me time, but it is not a self-destructive situation like gambling was. It's invisible when it's gambling because nobody knows that that's going on. There's no physical manifestation until you can't pay your electric bill or you're not able to make your mortgage. And so for me, I would have rather had that outward expression so people could have helped me and I could have gotten help sooner. Definitely so.